guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I got this hair and makeup look. So let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. The hair that I'm gonna be using today is from Sealy Hair. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video. They sent over a really beautiful Brazilian body wave wig in 24 inches. So to get these really cute waves, I'm gonna be using this styling tool from Bedhead. And one of the cool things about this um, crimping iron is that it has an adjustable knob at the end. So it actually allows you to customize how like defined you want your waves to be. So I went ahead and turned that little knob all the way clockwise so that way I get a really deep defined wave. So to get these waves, I pretty much just sprayed a little bit of my Got To Be hairspray. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit so that way it holds the style. And I just went from the root all the way to the ends and used that crimping iron to create these really cute waves. And that's pretty much all I did for this hairstyle. It is a little bit time consuming because it's not like curling hair where you can just wrap the hair around a curling iron and the whole entire section is like styled. You have to go from like the root all the way to the end with this one. So because the style is a little bit more time consuming, I went ahead and styled the majority of the wig on my mannequin head. I left the lace front part undone so that way when I go ahead and install the wig, I'm not having to worry about like messing up the waves that I just created. So I'm pretty much just gonna wave all of that hair up and then once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you guys how I installed this wig. So this is pretty much what the hair is looking like. It's so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and pause with styling and move on to installing the wig. I already have my wig cap on, so I'm just gonna cut little holes by my ears. So when I go in to secure that wig cap on, it lays a lot flatter and it's easier to secure. So now it is time to secure our wig cap. I'm gonna be using my Got To Be Free spray and I'm pretty much just gonna spray some along the hairline and just use my blow dryer on a cool setting to dry it all the way down. Then once the hairspray is dry, I'm gonna start cutting away all of that excess wig cap. So this is pretty much what we're looking like right now. I need my wig cap to match better with my natural skin tone. So I'm gonna be using my Ruby Kisses cream foundation. And I believe this is in the shade number nine. I'm gonna use a mixture of both of those shades and start applying it onto the very edge of that cap where my hairline is. And this is just gonna make it a lot easier for that lace to blend in more naturally into my skin tone. Then once I have that foundation on and everything is covered, I'm gonna use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cotton pad and just wipe away any excess product. So now I can start laying down my lace. I'm gonna use that same Got To Be Free spray to secure my wig down and work in sections. And again, you just wanna make sure that that hairspray is completely, completely dry before you move on to the next section so you don't have any lifting with your wig cap underneath. Thank you. 
Then off camera, I cut away all that excess lace. So I'm just going back in with a little bit of extra hairspray and just going over the very, very edge of that lace, just because there's little parts that I noticed were lifting. So this is just gonna make sure that everything blends in a lot better. And I'm not using a whole lot. I just went ahead and sprayed a small amount onto the back of my hand. And I'm using like this little clip to apply it. You just wanna make sure that those little edges there aren't lifting so everything looks super well blended. So I'm pretty much done installing the wig. I'm gonna go ahead and start finishing up like crimping the hair and everything. I'm gonna create my little middle part there first and just flatten everything out so it's nice and straight and there's no like little bumps everywhere. So I went ahead and used my little hot comb and I also added some more of that cream foundation from Ruby Kisses on the middle part just so it looks more natural and like blends in with like the front of the wig. And yeah, from there, I just went back in with my crimping iron and finished up styling the hair. It's so funny. while I was was like crimping the hair in this part my arms were getting like super tired so I was so glad that I did a majority of the styling on my mannequin head because I can't even imagine like the strain on my shoulders and my arms if I would have done all of this waving while the wig was on my head <laughs> So now that we've got our waves going, I'm gonna start working on my edges. I'm gonna pull a few pieces of hair from the front and just leave them in the right direction using my hot comb. And then with my scissors, I'm gonna use those to give them a good trim so that way I have like my desired length. And I'm gonna use my IsoPlus wrapping foam to style them up along with my edge brush. I was initially going for more of like a natural quote unquote, like edge style, like baby hairs, but it pretty much ended up looking like what I normally do. <laughs> I think next time I'll try a lot harder to do like more of like a natural like baby hair like type of look. And then for that last final touch, I use a little bit of Luster's a pink sheen spray all over the style just to really get those waves to like pop. And that is pretty much it for the hair guys. So I'm gonna show you guys how I got this makeup look. To start off the eyes, I went ahead and primed first using my Makeup Revolution Concealer in C12 along with the Be Perfect Eye Priming Base. The priming base is going on the middle of the lid and the concealer on the outside parts of the lid just so it blends in a lot easier into the skin. So I applied them both using a brush and then just went over everything using my sponge just to really make sure it sets down all the way. Moving on to shadows, I'm first gonna go in with a gray shadow from Melchior Cosmetics. This is in the shade Anthracite, I believe, and I'm gonna go ahead and start applying that onto the crease. I really wanna make sure that this color is nice and saturated. So I'm gonna take my time blending this color in and just building it up so that way it's nice and pigmented. Then next, going into another Melchior shadow, I'm gonna be using the shade Captive Gray, and I'm gonna use that to blend the edges of our last gray color. I'm also gonna be using a slightly larger brush. Before, I was using a Morphe M507. To apply this color, I'm using a Morphe M506. So it's gonna be a lot easier for me to really blend out the edges of that last shade. Then before I go into my third transition shade, I love to use the Fenty Beauty Blotting Powder on the brow bone area just to really make sure that that last transition color blends in super, super smoothly and has that really nice fade to it. Then next I'm going into the shade Soft Gray and I'm gonna use that to blend out our second transition color. And again, I'm just blending that out using a Morphe M506.
Then going back into that same concealer and primer mixture, I'm gonna start shaping out the lid space and kind of creating like almost like a really soft like cut crease. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that using a fluffier brush to get a really nice like kind of blended effect. And then to fill in the lid, I went back in with that same soft gray shadow and applied that using a flat shader brush. The shadow ended up being a little bit darker than what I was going for, so I also went in with a little bit of Pillow Talk from the Carnival palette in collaboration with Stacey Marie. And I added that on top as well, just to kind of soften that gray color a little bit more so it's not as dark. Then next I'm gonna go in with the Beauty Bakery Gelato Liner in the shade Black Milk, and I'm gonna use that to line my eyes. I'm not gonna create a full winged liner though. I'm gonna basically stop right at the outer corner. Then to blend out the edge of that liner, I'm gonna go in with a black shadow. This one is Lights Out from the same Carnival palette and apply it onto the outer corner and drag it into the crease. So if you're like me and you really love like a perfected liner, you definitely wanna go back in over your liner with a like liquid liner. So I'm using one from Beauty Bakery. This is their lollipop liner. And I'm just gonna basically kind of touch up any areas that I know need like a little bit of extra help there just to get that really, really, really crisp look. And then before I go into applying my false lashes, I definitely wanna apply a couple of coats of mascara. And the one I'm using today is from L'Oreal. This is their new unlimited mascara. I don't know how long it's been on the market, but I really, really like this one. The brush is amazing and the formula is totally bomb. Like they always kill it when it comes to mascaras. And then for false lashes today, I'm using a pair from Lovey Lashes and these are in the style red. So I'm gonna pause with the eyes for a second and move on to skin. I'm first gonna prep the skin using some Farsali Skin Tune Blur, and I'm just gonna add a couple of drops of that all over the face and just blend it in with my fingers. This is great if you love to use primers that are more smoothing, like that have like that filtered effect. So once I'm done applying my primer, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to foundation. Um, this is kind of where things started turning a little left for me when it came to like skin. Um, I was trying out a new foundation from NARS. This is their Radiant Longwear Foundation. Well, it's not new in general, but it's new to me. This is my first time using it. And I picked up a color, this is the shade Karakos, but it ended up being like too warm and too dark, which was so strange because I definitely tried this in stores and it looked perfect. But for some reason, when I got home, it was just a little too dark and a little too warm. So I'm gonna try and fix it using concealer and stuff. So <laughs> next I went ahead and used the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Sucre d'Orge. This one has more of like a yellowy type base. So I thought it would be better to kind of, you know, balance out like the warmness of the, um, the foundation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just went ahead and blended it out using the same Juno & Co microfiber sponge that I used to blend out the foundation. And then you guys already know, I like to kind of like double up on concealers. So I also use the Too Faced Sculpting Concealer. This one is in the shade Cookie, but because I'm using a second concealer, I try not to use as much product as the first one. So this one, I'm more so just focusing on the very, very, very inner part of the under eye. And again, I'm just gonna blend that out using the same sponge that I use to blend out the foundation. So next we want to set all of that concealer. So I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Peach Perfect Setting Powder. I love this powder so much. It makes me so happy every time I use it because it smells amazing. Um, I'm gonna be using a fluffier brush to apply this. I'm just gonna go over all the areas that I apply concealer. So the under eyes, the nose, a little bit on the cupid's bow, as well as the sides of the mouth and the chin.
Then to set the rest of the face, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This one is in the shade Medium Deep. And I'm just gonna go over everything else using a large fluffy brush. I'm not gonna go in with too much bronzer and like contouring and stuff because the foundation that I applied, like I said, was a little too dark and warm already. So I feel like I already have some like warmth going on. I just kind of wanna make sure that there is like, you know, dimension to my face. So to do that, I'm gonna use a mixture of the two sculpting and contouring shades from this Black Radiance palette and just go over like the cheekbones, the nose and the hairline with a very light hand. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the eyes at this point. So I'm just gonna use all the same shadows that I applied onto the crease and outer corner. I'm first gonna go in with that shade Anthracite, which is the darkest of the grays that we used on the crease and apply that directly onto the lash line. Then to blend that out, I'm gonna go in with the second darkest of the grays, which was Captive Gray and apply that using a Morphe M507. Then to blend our second shade out, I'm gonna go back in with a soft gray and apply that as well using a Morphe M506. Then just to make sure everything kind of matches with like the outer corner, I also added some of that matte black shadow from the Carnival XL Pro palette and added that to the lash line as well. Then to brighten up the eyes, I'm using a NYX white eye pencil. This one is their slide on glide on pencil and I'm just gonna add that to the waterline. Per usual, I'm going in with my L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Primer before I add my lower lash mascara. This just makes the mascara that I apply next go on a lot more like thicker, more voluminous and everything. And I also feel like I don't have to use as much mascara to get my lower lashes to look like super voluminous. So I'm gonna add a couple of coats of that. And while that's drying, I'm gonna add my inner corner highlight. I'm just going back in with the same Pillow Talk eyeshadow from the Carnival palette. And by the time I'm done applying my inner corner shadow, the lash primer Primer is pretty much dry so I can go ahead and add my mascara and I'm just using the same one that I applied on my top lashes. Side note, if you see me looking over to the side all the time, it's because I decided to watch a Netflix show while I was doing my makeup, which was a terrible idea because it made editing this video such a pain. I was watching the show Witcher. It's kind of giving me like Game of Thrones vibes. Let me know if you guys have watched it before, but so far I think I like it. I mean, from editing this video, I was definitely like looking to the side quite often, so I guess I can say that that I like it. But yeah, let me know if you guys have watched it before. The show is called Witcher and it's on Netflix. But back to our scheduled program, I'm gonna be using the Power Times Colored Rain Blush Duo in Damage Control and I'm just using the blush side to apply onto the apples of my cheeks. So next we have highlighter. I'm gonna be using the MAC Started Face Compact in Medium Deep, and I'm using a mixture of the bottom left and right highlighters. The one on the bottom right is Oh Darling, and I don't know the name of the bottom left, but I'll definitely put it down below in the description box for you guys. I believe that this compact came out during the holidays, but I remember seeing it on Instagram on Coco Swatch's account, and I instantly fell in love with it. And then when I found out that the extra dimension skin finishes were in it, I was sold. So I'm gonna use that to highlight all the high points of the face. So the nose, the cheekbones, a little on the cupid's bow, as well as the brow bone. Then moving on to brows, I'm gonna be using the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Ebony. This is like my ride or die. I always use this for like any type of brow style, like a fluffier natural brow, sculpted brows. This is just like my go-to. So um, I'm gonna be doing more of a sculpted brow. So I'm gonna create a line at the bottom, a line at the top, and then fill in the sparser areas of my brows by creating faux brow hairs.
Then next I'm gonna go ahead and start lining the lips using a mixture of two lip pencils from ColourPop. I'm using BFF3 and Pitch. I just went on the ColourPop website and realized that Pitch is not even like sold anymore. Like I don't even know how long it's been like that. But you can definitely use Chestnut by MAC or um, Melt Cosmetics Edible Lip Liner. That one's a really good one. In replacement of Pitch, which is like the darker of the two. Then to fill in my lips, I'm gonna use the NYX Lingerie Liquid Lipstick in the shade Corset. I'm gonna apply a little bit onto the lips using the applicator and then just blend it out into the lip liner using a brush. Before I go in with lip gloss, I wanted to test out this MAC lipstick as well in the shade Gold Star. I believe it also came out during the holidays along with that face palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that on top of my liquid lipstick. And this is just gonna give like that lip gloss that we apply on top a little bit of extra shine because it has more of like that metallic-y like glitter type of finish. So I'm just gonna apply that and then just give it a good blend into that liquid lipstick. And then for lip gloss, I'm gonna be using a mixture of two glosses from MAC as well. And these are in the shades Counting Star and Young Star. And then finally, to finish off the look, I'm gonna make sure everything is set using my Beauty Bakery Sweet Grace setting spray, and I'm gonna dry that all the way down using my fan. And that pretty much completes this look, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this makeup and hair tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up, and let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.